Hello everyone, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are, welcome to our PowerGen International webinar, where the grid starts and conventional meets renewables. I'm Rod Walton, content manager for both PowerGen International and Power Engineering. PowerGen International is only three short weeks away, December 4th through 6th in Orlando, Florida, at the Orange County Convention Center West Halls. Uh, you can find us at power-gen.com. It is the nation's largest trade show focused on electric generation, and this is our 30th birthday, so happy birthday to us. Uh, today, we've got a stellar crew talking about the content covering the span of power generation, both past, present, and future. We've got sessions on the base load, on coal, natural gas, and nuclear, which have been the backbone of our power generation mix for decades and even centuries. They're still crucial today and will be for many years to come. But PowerGen also knows that the world is changing and we're changing too. We'll have many sessions devoted to energy storage and microgrids. And for the first time in recent history, we'll have entire tracks on solar, wind, and hydropower. Digital solutions and cybersecurity, financing emissions and sustainability also will bring out the cream of the crop in industry thought leadership. And speaking of thought leadership, let me introduce our panel of experts today. Our moderator is Kevin O'Donovan, an international technology evangelist who will be at PowerGen as a social media influencer. He'll also be all over the place in the convention hall. So if you see him, stop over and say hello. Uh, Karen Bertram is president of Integrated Energy. She's an advisory committee member uh, for PGI focused on renewables and their growing place in the generation mix. Chris Mikowski is Global Director of Marketing Solutions for Siemens, he is a track chair for the Gas Turbines What's New track, and also will be a panelist and a presenter at several PowerGen sessions. And finally, a longtime industry leader and PGI committee member, Scott Affelt. Scott is president of Exemplar Energy, that's X-M-P-L-R. He's also a committee member for a long time, and he is track chair for Digital Solutions and cybersecurity. We we'll also have with us, making sure it's done right off camera, is the wonderful Anna Wackenhuth, who is a single senior digital marketing manager at Clarion Energy, who is the parent company of PowerGen International. And so with all of that said, let me turn it over to Kevin and our panel. Good morning and thanks, Rod. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world or wherever you're watching this. Um, Rod, you mentioned that you're 30 years since you started PowerGen and like everything in the energy industry, there's so much change going on. And PowerGen, as you mentioned, you have a lot of new tracks, a lot of new sessions. I've seen that you guys are bringing in hub sessions. You've got the powerful young professionals, all sorts of, of new stuff this year. Uh, what, what are the... What are the key things you're looking forward to? Well, we want to represent the, the, the world of power generation as it is and look with a look to where it's going to be. Uh, we have, as I mentioned before, we have four new tracks this year that are going to be in what we call the summits. And those are uh, microgrids, uh, renewables, all things solar and hydropower. We mm -hmm. also, you mentioned the hubs. This is a totally new thing for power gen. And these are sessions that are going to be shorter going to be sometimes solo presentations that are going to be on the exhibit floor so that anybody can see them. Anybody who wants to come by, we have four tracks on that uh, focused on decentralization, decarbonization. We have energy storage. We have the future of baseload and also emerging technologies, which is going to have sessions that will look at things like artificial intelligence, uh, you know, the Bitcoin, uh, you know, blockchain. That, that sort of thing, energy transactions, but also what's going on in emerging economies with respect to energy. It's going to be a pretty busy three days. And I think one of the challenges for all of us attending is, is where do you go? Oh, there's so much going on at the same time, but, but certainly it's an interesting time in terms of power generation. As you mentioned, everything is changing and, and new stuff and, and innovation happening in the core business as well. Absolutely. We, uh, we, you know, and it's not just the, we have plenty of startups involved. We have a lot of long time, you know, industry uh, anchors, the companies like Siemens, like Mitsubishi, Hitachi, 
Uh, many of those are going to be there. We're also proud to have a, a growing stable of utilities involved. Mm -hmm. We've got, we got Dominion doing a session on sustainability. We have our host utility, Orlando um, Utilities Commission, doing a session on all things solar. We have Duke Energy talking about drones and their impact in the power plant. Uh, it's just a really wide ranging group of uh, presenters and content. Wow, yeah, there, there are so many moving pieces in today's energy industry that, yeah, you guys are, it's content rich, right? Absolutely. Now, yeah, uh, Karen, you know, we often talk about lots of new things and, and sometimes renewables are seen as new, but Karen, you've been involved with PowerGen since 2013 um, on renewables and you've seen renewables become an established power generation option for many. What do you see coming at PowerGen this year in terms of renewables that's new or different or are taking renewables to the next level? Well, you know what? I've actually been involved with uh, Renewable Energy World before it was integrated into PowerGen, where it was a small little conference where you maybe saw three, 4,000 people until it merged with in 2013. And um, I think that PowerGen has been embracing the renewables, but slowly they've had a a few tracks where wind and solar were combined together. I think that having their own tracks and making them realize that they are an industry in themselves instead of just a little bit of wind and a little bit of solar. Um, I think this this conference has actually is going to outshine every other time that we've represented renewables at this conference. And in fact, I think last year, even on the exhibit floor, we spread the renewables throughout the conference and it was, it was it embedded everything where instead we were uh, just on a little green part mm -hmm. of the back corner of PowerGen. So I think PowerGen overall has embraced people's need for learning more about renewables. Uh, so many people ask me, well, why don't we see more renewables? And I think this year, PowerGen is going to reflect that a lot more. I really am excited about the knowledge hubs that you're that you talked about, Rod, because we're seeing solar 101. We're seeing wind win 101 we're getting the basics to the floor where people who are visiting can now see this and realize that the conference tracks will actually you know add more to your visit uh but just getting it out on the knowledge floor you're going to see so many new things and this, these 101s are more than just saying oh solar's good they're going into like financing how what really is the difference between pv on your roof and the large-scale renewables. I think that we're going to see that on the floor. And when you talk about all the big companies having uh, are also on the floor, remember mm -hmm. the exhibit hall has everything that can, you need to design a solar plant or talk to the experts about their technologies that are new. Because every year something new comes out, better inverters, better uh, ways to finance, better ways to uh, add those turbines. Uh, and I think that PowerGen is like, if I, if being a woman, it's like going to the mall for power generation. And, and you can all see that it's contributing to the, the renewable side. And I think I'm excited more than ever that renewables are taking their place. And PowerGen is really showing that this year. And no, then, yeah. And then the new technologies, they're all embedding because they all cross over. Um, of those new tracks that you added, renewables, are more than half of them. There's, like you said, all things solar, hydro, which usually just had a, a, a like an abstract here or there, uh, is now has its own uh, track and microgrids. They're an integral part of what renewables are doing. So I think you see like all the new tracks are embracing renewables. No, I agreed. And, and you know, what we're seeing worldwide is a couple of years ago, there used to be debate about you know, Rod mentioned it's where conventional meets renewable. And, and there was a kind of a question around uh, it's an either or, right? You either do conventional or you do renewables. But in today's world, there's, as we say over here in Europe, there's different horses for different courses. Yes. Um, so it's a mix. It, they're complementary, right? Now, if I may as well, I, re, um, I believe you're responsible for one of the, the new, new tracks, and that's covering uh, drones and UAVs, uh, UAS, uh, with Duke Energy. So that's a, a whole new angle for PowerGen as well this year, right? And that's one of those new knowledge hubs where people can see 
uh, uh, and come in on the floor and see that the, you know, the unmanned drones are being used as part of the p power generation space. And part of it is in, in, you know, on the grid optimization, which again, also falls in with renewables because as you build the renewable projects, you have to look at implementing them into a grid if it's not distributed energy. And that's another thing that PowerGen is doing. It's embracing the large scale renewables that are utility based and then also distributed generation for the microgrids. We're seeing that with small communities, co-ops, uh, especially with the military. Microgrids are an essential part. And I even saw that there's a, uh, there's a session track that's including uh, some of this on military, on on-site military. So we're we're not just uh, you know like a, a stepchild now renewables. And with some of the elections, like in Nevada, they voted at the midterm elections to go ahead and do 50% renewable. With 50% renewable, we're on equal footing here. It's not going to happen overnight, but these types of conferences can help people get to that 50% that much faster with lessons learned and all the new technologies. No, it, 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 somebody said at a conference last week here in Europe, you know, may you live in interesting times. And I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but right now it, it's certainly an interesting time in energy. Yes. Now, one of the things coming back to one of the core, um, the core competencies of PowerGen is, you know, we talk about all the new things that are happening and sometimes we get a bit carried away that all the new stuff is happening in digitization and there's no innovation anywhere else. Now, Chris, one of the topics at PowerGen that I'll be learning a lot on because it's not one of my core uh, skill sets is around the role of gas. And there's been a hell of a lot of innovation going on in everything to do with the, the, the gas generation industry, turbines, new materials, new designs of blades, you name it. What, what what do you expect to see around the world of gas at, at PowerGen this year? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Um, a, a lot of the things that I'm expecting out of this are uh, the the normal or the, the typical, the traditional advances in technologies and advances in product line. And traditionally, PowerGen has been uh, a showcase to, to roll out. You know, the OEMs will come out and say, here's our newest gas turbine or here's our newest development or it's more power, it's more efficient. And uh, while I'm sure you'll see that too, uh, I, I think the focus is gonna be in, and I think Karen alluded to this too, is, is how do things work together? So uh, mm -hmm. flexibility has always been a big uh, push, but uh, I think now it's gonna be something like adaptability. So you're gonna have to build a power plant and back five, 10 years ago, you knew how you were gonna run that power plant for the next 10, 15, 30 years. Nowadays, you don't. Not, not only do you not know how you're going to run the power plant, you don't know what the market's going to look like, what the ant, what the, the landscape of, of the whole energy industry is going to look like in a couple of years. So all of that needs to design be designed into these products and into these technologies. So I think where you start to see the race to 65% efficiency for combined cycles, the very next question is going to be, that sounds good, but what's your efficiency at 80% load or at 30% load? How low can you turn down and maintain emission, emissions compliance? How fast can you, can you bounce in between those two? And where's the flexibility and, and, and where's the aspect of making this power plant, not necessarily a base load, not necessarily a peaker, not necessarily a load following, but potentially all of the above or any. And that may need to change on a weekly, monthly or yearly basis. So I think that a lot of the technology discussion or focus is going to be on that. But I, I think also the way just the industry we're getting smarter is, is in the upfront, the way that we analyze these. Uh, again, if you rewind just a few years ago, you would talk about LCOE analysis or life cycle cost analysis. And nowadays it's, it's just it's tough to do that. Now you have to look at, at a second by second or a minute by minute dispatch optimization. And how does this power plant react here? And what if uh, renewables increase to 30, 50, 70 percent? Uh, how do we firm that? How does that get backed up? How do gas turbines or other gas fire generation work together with battery storage, which is going to be a big topic, too? How does all of this come together? How do these things synergize instead of being one or the other? Like you said, how do these how do we come up with the ideal energy solution using the best or the strengths of each component or each technology together? So I think we're going to have to look at that from an analysis standpoint on the upfront end. 
and then as well as a technology standpoint and how can we increase that flexibility or that adaptability for the future yeah no you know you mentioned the, the whole levelized cost of energy model you know life was easier when the equations were pretty static yeah, <laughs> um, as you say you now uh, legislation changes the market conditions change um technologies change whatever and the, the whole efficiency equation it, yeah interesting times to say the least now and not only if changing sorry. but the, the rate of change is mm -hmm. increasing so things are are changing things are always changing but now things are changing faster than they've ever changed before so we have to continue to to keep up with that no i agreed and you know as you mentioned and, and rod mentioned that everyone's mentioning it if you looked at the, the power generation industry years ago, there was little silos. So you had gas and nuclear and, as you say, renewables and yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's like, ooh, I need a bit of everything. And they're all mixing up. And, and um, Karen, you mentioned about the, the 101 sessions. You know, you, somebody may be the world's expert in wind, but they might benefit from going along to the, the gas 101 session, right? Because, you know, I live by the concept, I don't know what I don't know. Um, so I go along to these things to figure out that, oh, God, I don't know that. Um, mm. so th that's that's one of the value adds of going to this, because if we just all go to conferences that are very niche, then obviously we'll be we'll all be very niche. Yeah. And, now, they're, and they're experts right. and they're experts and they, they're they going to give you some of the lessons learned. And that's what's good about one hundred one. I agreed. Uh, so that we'd all, you know, you learn from the mistakes and the the the. The right thing to do from others it, it, it reduces everybody's time to to get up and running no agreed yes. now w the world where i normally live in is around digitization and and scott whether it's um whether it's conventional whether it's renewable whatever whatever you want to call it digitization is is uh, i know has been a key topic at powergen and you've been heavily involved with this over the years so what have you guys got in store for digitization this year Right. Well, um, well, for one thing, you know, we just started the digitalization track at PowerGen just a few years ago. And it's amazing. I think last year, some of the best attended sessions at PowerGen were uh, related to digitalization. I think it's a hot area. Everyone's really interested in, in how it can apply to their business. As you pointed out, the digitalization can apply to all the different power generation sectors, you know, nuclear, coal, combined cycle, and the renewables. Uh, so, so that's kind of an interesting, and, and of course, we do have this new digitalization track and cybersecurity track, but, but the other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, the, some of the other uh, tracks that are more specifically targeted for either conventional, natural gas, or renewables, there's a lot of sessions and topics around how to apply digitalization to those specific areas as well. So all of our digitalization effort here, while certainly there's a lot of information in the tracks that we have, it's kind of spread out uh, and integrated into a lot of the other sessions. I think this year, I expect the digitalization to really focus around you know, two major themes. The first theme is really looking at how conventional generation plants like nuclear and coal and and even natural gas combined cycle plants can use digital technology, the internet of things and innovation to improve the performance and the reliability of these assets. And also at the same time, lower the O&M costs. You know, these plants have been operated and, and are being operated much differently today than they were in the past. You know, they were traditionally base load, but, but the, with the introduction of renewables, they're starting to be operated in a much more cycling manner. This is putting a lot of extra strain and fatigue on these plants. And so it's much more important to be monitoring them for performance and reliability than it used to be for these plants to remain competitive and relevant to provide a stable and, and balanced grid. So there, you know, technologies like digital twin and advanced data analytics, they can be used to monitor data from these plants in real time and in, improve the performance and the reliability by finding problems at the earliest time so the plants can avoid outages. And it can also then allow these plants to move to a more predictive or condition-based maintenance strategy, mm -hmm. which will lower the O&M costs because it really requires them to do the maintenance only when it's needed. You know, there was a recent McKinsey study that came out uh, and estimates that power generation plants can lower their O&M costs by 5 to 10% by 
just applying these digitalization analytics solutions. So there's real opportunity to improve. The second theme is related to digitalization, but it really is centered on the cybersecurity aspects. You know, the cybersecurity, it's a, it's a pretty complicated issue for, for plants. And it's, it's both at the power generation level and the grid level. But in any case, all these digitalization uh, initiatives, they rely on data. And data is usually uh, dispersed in different silos, as you mentioned, across the organization. And that data has to be gathered and uh, accessed and collected and stored and then analyzed in real time in order to add value. And so this creates challenges around managing the integrity and the security of that data. And so we've got a number of sessions on cybersecurity. In fact, I'll be hosting a mega session uh, on cybersecurity topics on Wednesday afternoon with panelists from different utilities and cybersecurity experts. And the point will be to have a very interactive discussion around the cybersecurity issues. Plants and utilities will share some of the challenges that they see, and we'll get some discussions from the experts on how they suggest you address uh, these cybersecurity issues and and put together a, a robust security cybersecurity plan. Mm -hmm. So um, so we've got a lot going on, on on digitalization in the tracks and cybersecurity. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, digitalization issues that are interspersed in a lot of the other sessions as well. I agree. You know, Chris mentioned. Uh, the way you operate gas plants and the, the efficiency levels and it goes up and down based on market conditions. To your point, what I always found fascinating as I, I started digging into my homework prior to PowerGen is in most of the conventional power plants and obviously now with the renewables, there was a lot of data collected by a lot of these places, but it stayed in the black box and never went anywhere. So even just connecting stuff together to get that data as you say, you move to a predictive maintenance plan as opposed to send some guy out every two years and change something. Um, no, and it, it's fascinating to, you know, I, as I say, I lived in the IT world for many years and we had IoT on slides for five or six years ago. It's it's good to see this stuff being being used in anger. Um, but as you say, there are some features, you know, cybersecurity is, is real, right? But there's ways to, you can be smart about it. So yeah, no, it'd be fascinating. Yep. Yeah, in the past, a lot of the data was held by the OEMs. It could be either a gas turbine company or even a wind turbine company. And, and I think owners and operators of these assets want this data. They want to control that data and they want to own that data and, and try to create even more value out of that. So there's some interesting times ahead with respect to uh, the cybersecurity and the ownership of data. Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, that's a, and depending on the part of the world you're in, there's also other fun and games with it as well. Yeah, it's fascinating. Right. So, folks, now you've been involved in planning PowerGen. You've been on the various committees. You're running different tracks, chairing sessions, probably for what? You've been at it for probably at least 12 months. Could I ask you, just as a general discussion, is there any new topic or any new thing you're, you're expecting to be a, a key talking point over the coffee and as people wander around? What's, what's going to be new this year? Hmm. That's hard. I, I, I don't. I don't know because every there's a lot. Always something new. As far as and and now with the knowledge hubs, as I was looking through all the different knowledge centers and hubs and all the times, I see that there's so much new going on. Like you said, the unmanned drones being used as far as power generation, looking for grid optimization. That's exciting in itself. And then they're seeing some overlay as far as some new themes with the digital, uh, the digital, like we just discussed. Um, I one of the other conferences I like to go to is Distribute Tech and utility products. It's nice to see PowerGen taking a little bit of that through this this conference type of track to bring some of it to PowerGen because otherwise it was. You, you mostly got some of that information and it's nice to see that some of the new stuff that you see at Distribute Tech is being embedded into the conference tracks talked about just now. So no, I, I agree. Agreed. Yeah, yeah I, would Anybody add, else? I would add one thing that's um, that I'm kind of expecting and, and that's that, uh, you know, in, in the past, PowerGen's always been a real good showcase. I think Chris, Chris mentioned this for new technologies or or OEMs to introduce new uh, features and in, in, in their in their equipment and such, and, and it still remains an important part of PowerGen. 
But, but I think that over the last few years, a lot of the attendees are, while they're interested in what's happening in the new area, about what's going to impact the business five or 10 years from now, I, I think a lot of folks are even more interested in what can I do today to really change or improve my business or my plant? Um, you know, things are so competitive and things are changing so quickly, as Chris pointed out, that uh, while it's important to keep your eye on the horizon, uh, you also have to make sure you're looking at your feet while you're walking to see what, uh, what's going to be in front of your, uh, your, your path you know, tomorrow. Yeah, if you, if you don't look after tomorrow, well, the future will look after itself, right? Exactly. And, and I think there's a lot yeah. of things, both, both in renewables and in the, uh, what we call, it used to call the base load, but, you know, cycling the coal fleet, uh, things that are, uh, we got one session uh, where Dominion talks about it's planned, it's applying for a license for, uh, I believe it's two of its nuclear plants. They're going to drive those to 80 year lifespans. And that's, that's amazing, you know, and it is, you know, we're not building a lot of nuclear. We got one facility, we got one plant down in Georgia that's being constructed, but that's it. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the nuclear fleet is still 20% of our generation mix. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about how do you, we not only have sessions talking about decommissioning nuclear plants, where a lot of people think that's all that's happening, but also utilities talking about keeping them going, improving them, making them. Uh, more efficient and safer. Uh, we, you know, using the digitization for things like uh, digital twinning, predictive maintenance, mm -hmm. plants, stuff like that. It's all across the front. It's very exciting to talk about renewables, and that's a great front. What's going on in California, but also you, you got things going on on the East Coast where uh, New York, New Jersey, are have passed bills to uh, try to get subsidies for their for their nuclear facilities and uh, make them economic and competitive. And those are a lot of things going on that th th we feel like we represent well, which is across the board, all of the above power generation. No, I agreed. And, and you mentioned, you know, granted, there's a lot of information at PowerGen on the, let's say the US market, but it's PowerGen International. You've got, got to focus on emerging markets. There's a lot of stuff going on in Europe. And then you see what's going on in China with renewables and nuclear and whatever, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating. Absolutely. Interesting things going on in Latin America as well. No, I agreed. So guys, we're, we're, we're coming towards the, the end of this webinar, but I, I've got one question for each one of you. What's the key thing you're looking forward to at PowerGen? So I'll start with you, Rod. Just well, one I thing. Mean, for me, uh, you know, uh, I think that, seeing the hubs play out. This is a new idea for us. Uh, it's been done, in, you know, with our, our new owner, Clarion Events. It's done it in Europe. It's very successful. I think it's a great way. Those that are on the floor, the exhibitors who can't really get up to the to the uh, summit uh, events, it'll be a chance for them to see a lot of great content that stands mm -hmm. on its own. I think it'll be exciting to see how that plays out. Cool. And Karen? Well, I, I agree with Rod. I am excited to see about the, the the knowledge hubs, but my only problem is is that there there's so much to see and so many things that I want to go to that I literally am already charting which conference tracks because I want to see three of them and they're all at the same time. So um, if I could have a, a conference buddy, you take that one, I'll take that one and we'll switch our notes. That would be the greatest thing because there's a lot of stuff on the knowledge hubs that have caught my eye and they're at the same time as some of the conference tracks at renewables that I really want to see. So I might be having to split my time and I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to be tired at the end because there's so much to do. Absolutely. No, I agree. A lot of walking too. <laughs> so, so Chris, what are you, what's the one thing you're looking forward to? I agree. This is a, it's certainly a jam packed couple of days, but to me, what gets me the most excited about this, especially this year that you're starting to see more and more is the cross pollination of, of, of the, of the typical, you would call them silos and where I would go up and give a gas fired combined cycle presentation. I have two or three slides on renewables and a slide on digitalization. And just to be able to see that we're getting smart enough now that all of this is coming together to, 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 to form a true solution instead of an answer. It's really a solution. 
It's multiple pieces, multiple components of it all coming together. And then what I really like the most is right after these presentations or the Knowledge Hub discussions are the one-on-ones that you have because there's so many people here that'll come up to you and say, you know, I hadn't even thought to use that this way. Had you, did, did you ever think about using it this way? And just those interactions with, with such a diverse crowd of, of plant owners and plant operators and maintenance personnel versus uh, economic or financial analysts versus um, you know, grid balancing authorities. It's everybody's in the same room potentially at the same time. So you have a lot of discussions that, you know, you start mm-hmm. scratching your head going, I hadn't even thought about that application or that use for this. And then you start to get really excited about, you know, potential from there on. I agreed. And Scott. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to just echo uh, some of the things that Chris said. I think one of the, the most interesting things for me is to, uh, is the, is the networking that goes on at PowerGen, both, uh, in terms of you know, the relationships that I have in the industry, but meeting new folks at the technical sessions or walking the floor. And as Chris mentioned, I think inevitably every year I've been to PowerGen, I'll walk away with some idea or concept that I'd never thought about. And it, and it, and it usually is some combination of someone's doing something in another area that I'm not familiar with. It could be in the renewables area. And, and I, I, I can pick some ideas out of that. I kind of call it ideation. You know, how can we take ideas and concepts from one area and apply them to another area? And, and I really have both uh, professionally excited about that, but also look forward to that at PowerGen because every year I find a new idea or a new way to combine some uh, application or knowledge or something from one area and applying it to the next. No, I, I agreed. And personally, you know, we just came off of uh, Clarion Energy's European Utility Week here in Vienna uh, last week, which would be the equivalent of Distributech. And the key takeaway there for me, um, we did some interviews with the Smart Energy International who would be at PowerGen, Power to Clarion, was there was very little hype about new technologies. It was get stuff done. Yeah. You know, people are plugging in electric vehicles, renewables are here. Uh, yada, yada, yada. You might not like the legislation, but it's happening. So just get on with stuff. And, and I, I think there's a, I'll be, I'll be curious to see, and I'm, I'm guessing it'll be the same pragmatic thing. The second part for me will be, you know, doing my homework for, for PowerGen, I was going through gas and, the coal and the, the emissions and whatever. And I'm like, oh God, I didn't know half of this stuff. Um, so I'm curious as to how much other things I'll, I'll, I'll wander around and see something on a stand or a hub or a presentation and go, oh God, I had no idea that even existed. Uh, and to your point, oh, we could use that somewhere else or, you know, how do you, I like the word ideanization or whatever. Sorry. I, whatever. Ideation. Um, Ideation. Uh, don't know what I don't know. So it'll be fascinating. I'm sure I have a longer list when I come back. Rod, yes, uh, you're gonna close us off. Yes, and and let me just add to that a little bit of what Scott said, a little bit of what you said. You know, it's it's fascinating for me to walk around the show and these shows and see you know new ideas gaining traction, see old friendships, uh, you know, refortified people talking, having fun, and also deals getting done, and that happens yeah. a lot as well. So that's a big part of it as well to see all these businesses intermingling. Uh, and creating new things that way through through that synergy, uh, I believe. So that, that's an awesome part of it. And so with that, um, I just want to say to everyone who has taken the time to uh, listen in and watch this webinar, greatly appreciate your time. I know you're busy, and making the time for us means a lot. Uh, I want to thank Kevin O'Donovan, Karen Bertram, Chris Mikowski, and Scott Affelt for lending their energies and expertise to making PowerGen what I believe will be a great show with something for everyone who is interested in our power generation mix. I want to thank you also to Anna for helping put all of this together. And remember, PowerGen International is not far away, but there's still time to register and be a part of it. Uh, If you're a power generation owner, such as a utility, we have group discounts available. Also go to power-gen.com for more information on content and to register. I'm Rod Walton. Thank you again for tuning in. Great. And, Great to have you here, and it'll be great to see you in Orlando December 4th through 6th for PowerGen International.